This week on Battle of the Ports, we take a look at a very early attempt at a side-scrolling dungeon crawler. Well, kind of. This is Dragon Buster by Namco. Dragon Buster first saw a release in 1984, and runs on the same hardware as Namco's Pac-Land game. The story of the game has the player, Clovius, navigating through dungeons, graveyards, mountains and towers in order to reach the castle to rescue his beloved Princess Celia. There are multiple clones of Princess Celia in the game, one in every few castles. The goal is to reach the true Celia at the end of the game in the final castle. Each stage starts with a world map, showing all the worlds Clovius needs to defeat in order to make it to the next round. The cool thing is that you're not required to complete each area of a stage, as there is a path allowing you to navigate to which area you wish to tackle. This makes for some replay value or experimenting with finding the best route for your abilities. Dragon Buster was a hit in Japan, where Game Machine listed it on their March 1st 1985 issue as being the third most successful table arcade unit of the month. is for the Famicom, which was released on January 7th, 1987. This port comes from Tosa, and like a lot of the early Famicom games, this is rather weak. The port has one major issue from the start. Our main character walks too far to the right of the screen before it scrolls. This is horrible because you have less time to see enemies coming up to you. The play mechanics are even more stiff than the arcade game, with the jump physics being incredibly floaty and very awkward to pull off a double jump. Add in the significant increase to the difficulty and we have one pretty annoying and poor playing game. On the plus side, this port does have some new items to collect. Wow! June 10th 1987 saw the release of the Sharp X1 port by Mycomsoft and released on the Demper label. Now Mycomsoft have a very good reputation for making quality products, and this is no exception. For a Sharp X1 title, this is very good. We've got a lot of colour, good sound, and a game that is way more playable than the Famicom port. In fact, this plays quite close to the arcade version. And get this. The game also uses two independent fire buttons, so even the control layout is the same as the arcade. A very good port for the limited resources available. port was released on the 28th of August 1987 for the PC-88. Again, this port comes to us from Mycomsoft. This port is the first and only to feature an introduction to the game and an entirely new ending featuring cinematic screens depicting a battle-torn Clovius and a teary-eyed Celia. Now, a lot of people think this port is by Enix, but it's not. 
they only distributed the game. As we can see, this is another very good port, and one that looks even closer to the arcade than the Sharp X1 release. Not only does it look closer, but it also sounds closer and has no loading at the beginning and ending of a stage. It does however have issues with sprites popping onto the screen, and a lot less on screen compared to the ports that came before it. Still, even with those negative points, this is still a great version of Dragon Buster. Fujitsu FM77AV was next with another Microsoft port in November 1987. And another version that is really nice for the hardware it is running on. The game looks very close to the arcade machine and even manages to sound fairly like it. Playability is also good with solid collision detection, precise controls and two button pleasure. finally got their lazy ass in gear and made an in-house port for the MSX2. This version was released on the 19th of December 1987 and it sucks. Yep, Namco couldn't even port their own game as well as Microsoft did on weaker hardware. For some reason Namco changed the controls in this port. Up until now, the arcade and all home ports had up as jump, button 1 as attack and button 2 as magic. In this MSX2 version, button 1 is attack and button 2 is jump. That's fine, but now magic is down and jump. That is just weird. The game is also unforgiving, thanks to its dodgy collision detection and overpowering bosses. A few years passed before the next port appeared. This was for NEC's PC-98, which saw Microsoft yet again doing the port in March 1989. What is strange is that this one seems much easier than the PC-88 port and looks worse in many ways. Makes you wonder if this was meant to be released. What is interesting though, is that this port actually has an option screen, in which you can see the system specs and change game parameters.
The X68000 also saw the Micomsoft port even later, on the 10th of December 1993, as part of their arcade anthology range. This was Volume 7. As to be expected, we have a near perfect port of the arcade game. There's not much more to say really. Finally, we finish off with the PlayStation release. This comes on Namco Museum Volume 2, courtesies of Tose. This collection of Namco classics was released in Japan on October 28, 1999. The port is basically arcade perfect, however, the presentation isn't that great. The game runs at an odd resolution, which causes a shimmering effect as the screen scrolls. You can kinda see it even in this captured footage. This is a shame as the port is pretty rock solid apart from that. Let's take a look at all those versions of Dragon Buster running side by side. Oh! 